Hello everybody. So today we are going to look at how to swap your coils uh, on your 1UZ BBTI LS 498 to 2000 to the 3UZ style coil, which is the much smaller one. Uh, so to start off with, uh, as you know, they are two completely different types of connectors. They are different wiring as well, but it really is not complicated to change them over. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the connector so you can differentiate between the two of them. So on the left here, this is your 1UZ VBTI coil. That's the big, bigger, chunkier one. And on your right here is your 3UZ style coil. So these came in um, a, a bunch of vehicles. I think I, in our case, IS200 and 3UZ. In the United States, I think the GS400 uh, 1UZ VBTI also use these types of coils rather than the big ones. And same with the Crown. Uh, later generation crowns they also use these uh, smaller style connectors so we do know that they're obviously interchangeable there's no problems there at all they work just fine um, and the 1UZ VVTI cam cover is exactly the same as the 3UZ so there's no modification required you literally just bolt out the 1UZ coils bolt in the 3UZ slash IS200 coils and change the plugs around and away you go so to looking at the plugs now so what we'll do is we'll first go through Obviously, we've been through what they look like. We'll go through how to know what pin is what. I'll tell you how to depin them. And then we'll go through and actually look at the diagrams and we'll see what the differences between these two coils are in terms of the wiring. So to start off with, these are, if you have genuine coils, they are actually labeled. So you've got one, two, three, and four down there. The general rule I tend to follow is clip at the top. If you're looking where the wire goes, the terminal goes into the back of the connector, uh, it's basically working from right to left. So there's one, two, three, four. This plug is exactly the same. Um, this is actually labeled underneath here. There's one, so on this little base over here at the bottom, it's got one, two, three, and four. Uh, if you have an old harness, obviously this is gonna be covered in dirt and oil and all types of yucky stuff. So these numbers may not be visible. So that's why I say you can use that method. Clip at the top, starting from the right, one, two, three, four. Each connector has a secondary lock. In this case, it's these white frames over here. In this one over here, you've got this little sort of cutout here that you can put a flathead screwdriver in and wedge it up. In the one using VVTI, you've got these two holes over here that you can put your flathead screwdriver in and you can wedge that up. So once that secondary lock is up, the wedge lock that's inside you, so this wedge lock here actually goes into this hole in the terminal, and that's what stops the terminal from going out. This wedge lock, pushes in, which then stops this wedge lock from being moved backwards, which would then release the terminal. So that's what these do. Those are the ones that actually lock the terminal in place. So depending on how small and thin your screwdriver is, you can remove these entirely, but they are designed more just to be wedged up and lodged up like that. And then you need a really thin, small flathead screwdriver to reach down in there and then actually move the wedge backwards so the terminal will come out. In terms of deep pinning, if you think about it logically, this wedge here is going into that hole. And if you try and pull on the wires while at the same time moving the wedge out the way, you're, f you're fighting yourself. The more you pull on the wire, the more that wedge lock is going to lock in place. And what will tend to happen is you'll put the screwdriver down, trying to move it down. And especially on, if it's an older plug, um, you're going to end up breaking the little lip that you can actually move the wedge backwards. And in which case, then it, it's game over. You have to basically break the plug to get the terminal out. So the trick there is, before I even start to do it, I'll always take the wire and I'll just move it in and out a little bit. It's got about a millimeter of movement as standard. So I move it in and out and that makes sure that the terminal and the grommet is not stuck to the connector. Okay, so take it, wiggle it out. It does form another function because if your wire is a little bit loose and you give it a little wiggle like that and it falls out of the terminal, well, hey ho, then you know you had a loose terminal there and the crimp was a failing because they can fail at the back end of the crimp. So obviously you've got the crimp section and you've got the section that goes around the grommet. Uh, so there's your crimp section over there. There's your little wings that go around the grommet to hold that in place. And just here, just after the crimp over there, I've seen them fail over there. Bearing in mind, look, these came out in 1998 to 2000. So even the very last in the roll of the factory line are now 21 years old. So they haven't done too badly if they have broken. But anyway, so yeah, pull the, push the wire back in then put the screwdriver and move the wedge lock out the way just so that you relieve the tension on that wedge lock before you try and move it back. So that's, is the, that is the tip that I would give you. Wiggle the connector up and down first. Make sure that they're loose and you're not trying to fight uh, like a stuck grommet if some sort of grime has got in around the grommet. Uh, and also that you're not fighting against the actual wedge lock itself. Okay, so push in, wedge lock out, come out. And they do come out easily. So if it is a little bit hard, 
push it in again, try again. Don't go too crazy, otherwise you break the little lip where you can actually move the wedge out the way, and then it's time to break the plug up. Okay, so that's what they look like. That's the secondary lock. That's the wedge lock that holds the terminal in place, and that's what the terminal looks like from underneath. Uh, we do supply, obviously, all of these connectors and terminals and grommets. So if you do find that when you come to deepen your 1UZ1, another thing that they tend to do is at where the wire comes out the grommet, um, over time that sort of coating around the wires become hard and brittle. So sometimes you'll find that as soon as you start moving it around, when you're trying to sort of push it in and get the wedge lock out, you'll see that it starts to crack. So um, if, you, if you find that probably better just to replace the terminals at the same time while replacing the plug. Otherwise, you're just going to get moisture in there and your whole wire is going to corrode up to the actual ECU and then you're going to end up with problems anyway in the near future. So again, we do supply all these connectors and all these terminals and all the required grommets to go with it. Because that's the other thing that I didn't mention is that these particular uh, plugs over here, they take a six millimeter grommet. These take a five millimeter grommet. You can put the six millimeter grommet in. It just needs a little bit of help. So just push it in with a flathead screwdriver on the way back there. Okay, so over to the wiring side now to see what is the differences between the two of them. So first of all, this is the LS430. So the 3UZ, this is the smaller one. So starting at number one, we've got number one, that's going to be our 12 volt supply. So that's your 12 volts there. Number four is going to be your earth. So Toyota white with the black is earth. Uh, also brown is quite a common color for to go to earth but again these colors are specific to different models different models they'll change so don't stress about the colors stress about the pin location only so one is 12 volts four is earth now then two is what we call the igf signal or ignition feedback so that's how your ecu determines whether the calls has fired or not that's how you get your misfire codes on your obd2 diagnostics and number three is your igt signal so that's a signal actually from the ecu to fire the coil okay so quick recap one 12 volts four earth 2 IGF, 3 IGT, okay? Now we're gonna go over to the 1UZ VVTI course. This is the big one now. So one is 12 volts, okay? So that's exactly the same. Four is ground, so that's exactly the same. So one and four, don't have to worry. Take one out, put it into one of the other. Take four out, put it into four of the other. But the two middle wires are what's swapped around. So two is now IGT, three is now IGF, okay? One 12 volts, four ground, two IGT, three IGF, one UZ VVTI big style coil. One 12 volts, four earth ground, two IGF, and three IGT. So it's literally as simple as just swapping the other two middle wires around. Okay. And that's basically it. So again, in physical wiring terms, it's really that simple. So effectively, if you want to change it around, really really easy get yourself some connectors that you're going to change around the terminals are exactly the same so you don't have to worry about changing terminals the grommet is obviously a six millimeter on the one uz vvti and is a five millimeter on the three uz but you can put the six millimeter into the five millimeter it just needs a little bit of help and persuasion to get in there if you find when you're deepening your one uz coil that all the, the wire coating where it bends to go into the actual connector itself is broken uh, our advice is obviously to cut off that broken piece of wire, strip it back, make sure you've got some nice clean copper, and then obviously reuse the grommet, push it back over, and just get yourself some new terminals, and you can crimp it on from there, and then put them into your new connector. But hopefully that has been helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, comment down below. We try and get through as many as we can. Otherwise, you can get in touch with us at our Facebook page, at Phoenix Engine Management. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, again, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers.